Travel to the Astoria Belt. On April 23rd, Space Age Asteroid Belt will start in Forge of Empires. I checked what it would mean today to travel to the Astoria Belt compared to the current technological possibilities. But using the best moment only solves one of many problems. The objects in the Astoria Belt rotate around the Sun in a corridor between Mars and Jupiter. As a representative for the huge number of rocks out there, I added the dwarf planet Ceres to the planets of our solar system. Let us assume that we wanted to travel to Ceres. Then we cannot start under the impulse of the moment. Instead, we have to wait for the best moment. In the video, you see clearly that sometimes Ceres is on the same side of the Sun as our planet Earth and sometimes on exactly the opposite side. It would be bad to start when the distance is at its maximum. A start would be best when the flight path is the shortest. This only happens every 15 or 16 months. The flight duration would be the next challenge. Using chemical engines of today's technology, the transfer to Ceres would last more than two years. For the return, we must wait again for the best constellation of Ceres to Earth up to 16 months. Then the travel back would last another two years. Fortunately, InnoGames did not implement this very realistic. Otherwise, the game would have become extremely long. In the game, a single click is enough and you are there. Scientists would wish to be able to do the same. At least scientists work on an improvement of the ion drive, a sort of magnetic plasma engine. It receives thrust from ionized gas, which gets heated up further by magnetic fields. Using this, it is already possible to send out little spacecraft with 10 times the speed, which means several hundred thousand miles per hour. For a manned spaceship, the current research isn't advanced enough. But it might become possible to use normal rockets to send all parts to the ISS, construct a spaceship with the ionic engine there and use it to travel to Ceres. The required energy could then be generated by a nuclear power plant on board. The spacecraft Dawn already traveled to the asteroid belt. This was a project of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, under the management of the US space agency, NASA. JPL is a division of the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. The University of California in Los Angeles was responsible for the scientific part of the mission. The camera system used on board was developed and built under the leadership of the Max Planck Institute for researching the solar system in Katlenburg, Lindau, together with the Institute of Planet Research of the Deutsches Zentrum für Luft- und Raumfahrt DLR in Berlin and the Institute for Data Technology and Communication Networks in Brunswick. This delivered great pictures from the asteroid belt, giving us an impression of how it really looks like. After four years flight duration, the spacecraft arrived at the asteroid Vesta. Here some photos when the spacecraft came closer to that asteroid. With a diameter of 525 kilometers, it is one of the biggest objects in the asteroid belt. After dawn followed Vesta for a while, it moved forward to Ceres. With a diameter of 940 kilometers, this is the biggest single object in the asteroid belt. This is why it usually isn't called an asteroid, but a dwarf planet. 
if someone would really start a settlement out there, the decision would be made for one of the biggest objects. Example given, Ceres. 2018, all energy was used up and we never again heard of Dawn. But we still have these great photos giving us an idea of how it really looks like out there. 